Hi, I'm Dean. In this video, I'm going to talk about how email spoofing works. Now, what is email spoofing? It's basically a technique used by scammers to forge an email address, you know, and then use it to send out to uh, victims to trick them into uh, doing certain things. For example, click a link to, you know, send out password or uh, click a link to download a malware so that the scammers can uh, do further damage or uh, simply make a payment to a certain address, etc, etc. Basically, the whole objective is to make you think that email came from someone you already know, therefore less suspicious. Now, those uh, sp uh, the spoof email address can sometimes even be appear to be coming from your own company. And that's probably, you know, you would think, has your computer, you know, uh, got hacked by someone? Did someone gain access to your email accounts? You know, I mean, how did they use your email address to send out emails? And, well, sometimes it may be true that your system or your server got compromised, but oftentimes, right, it was actually a lot easier than you think. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I can actually create an email address, which supposedly not belong to me and then I use it to send out emails and then I'm going to help uh, walk you through on how to identify whether the email comes from the uh, legitimate you know sender or not so stick around as I was saying to create an email address is a lot simpler than you think all you need actually is a hosting space uh, and if you're gung-ho enough you can even set up your own server at home but we're gonna skip those trouble on the screen, I have a hosting space which uh, you know I own. Uh, this is of course not my main hosting uh, server, right? If you can see here, I have created this space for my domain deanlaw.com. Well, I obviously own deanlaw.com, uh, and I intend to use my domain because I don't want to uh, just use someone's domain. But um, let's pretend I don't own deanlaw.com, right? Let's pretend this is someone else's domain. But I'm telling you, it's, you know, to create a, a hosting space for a domain, it's this simple. You can just put in whatever domain name, even you, if you don't own it, right? Because you're not going to use, you, you're not going to need this domain. You just need this to achieve the spoofing uh, results. So I have here created a space for deanlaw.com. Let's say I don't own this, right? And I, the next thing, I create an email account for myself. So I have created an email account. And once again, uh, just pretend this is not my domain and this is supposedly not my email address. All right, I'm, I'm going to use this guy who is named by dean at deanlaw.com. Right, so I created an email address and, and I still don't own the domain, right? And next thing is, I'm going to go to the webmail all right, the webmail uh, that supposedly belongs to this email address, right? I'm going to use it to send out an email uh, to someone. So for the sake of testing this, I will well, send it to myself, my other email address. So I'm going to go compose. All right, now it seems that it's coming from dean at deanlaw.com and to, well, my business email address. All right, and I'm just going to put in some uh, subject line here. You know, well, for easier, for the... For the purpose of demonstration, right, I'm just going to use really lame subject here. This is fake me, alright? I mean, obviously, the real scammer will not do this, but I do this so that we can easily identify this later. And I'm going to send this out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to send this email without text. Just pretend I fill in some uh, email body, alright? And email sent, uh, successfully sent. Now, before we check that email, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to the actual email account of a dean at deanlaw.com. Well, because I'm the owner, right? But let's pretend I don't own it, right? So I'm going to log into that account and I'm going to use it to send out, you know, email to the same email address. And then we are going to compare that two emails, all right? Because this is exactly how I'm going to show you the differences, okay? So let me drag that window over. So as you can see here, I'm using Google Workspace for my deanlaw.com. Once again, this email will be coming from dean at deanlaw.com and I'm saving, sending to the same recipient. And this time around, I'm going to say, this is real me with the signature. So I'm going to send it. Oops, I'm supposed to close this. So we're going to wait a few seconds for the email, uh, both the emails to arrive at my business account. I'm going to pause this for a second. 
All right, on the screen here, I've got both emails open. All right, one, this is fake me. The other one, this is real me. Uh, both appear to come from Dean at DeanLaw.com, right? So how can we tell which is real Dean and which is not real Dean? Now, uh, I'm in this example, since I'll be, I'm using Google Workspace, right? This method works for Google Workspace. And if you're using other email services or e different email applications, email apps, then the, the method is slightly different. But you um, you probably want to refer to the user guide on how to you know check information. The keyword here to look for is check email header. All right. Uh, in Google Workspace, to do that, we come we click these triple dots on the, the uh, side here. We look for show original. All right. Uh, Google they don't use this e word. Uh, they don't use the word email header, but it says show original. So I'm going to open that. And I'm going to drag it to the screen here. So we've got this uh, the email header uh, open, and let's examine this uh, you know this email to find out whether this email is real or fake. Now um, the first few uh, tell uh, telltale right is immediately here. Immediately here you will see uh, under these two rows right it, it says here soft fail and fail. Uh, basically. The email server they uh, compare this email uh, with a central um, domain name server it's called DNS, right? And to confirm uh, whether this email is indeed sent from who it claimed it was, and upon check, the the server can immediately tell this is not you know it's supposed to uh, be fake email, so it fail SPF and it fail DMARC check. But don't worry about all this technicality. Uh, what I want you to start looking right is uh, use a search function. Look for receive. All right. So we highlighted the receive here. Oh, sorry. I should have okay, receive. So we just got to uh, pay attention at these lines. Uh, first few, they are you know how I mean basically what it said what the information show here is where this email had traveled. All right. Now, the act of sending email basically, you know, when you hit the send button, your email sent out from your computer to the router, the router sent through your internet service provider, your internet service provider uh, look for the, the addressee, you know, send to the respective server. In between, right, it, it would have routed many, many servers, all right? So this is, uh, the information here is going to cover that, how, you know, uh, how many routes or how many loops this email has travel but we don't need to know all those things we just need to look at a few key information so I'm going to skip the first two now this is something interesting now uh, this part all right it says that this email came through this server called stackmail so this is the part right pretend that uh, pretend I don't know this domain all right uh, and I received this email from this someone that sent the email through stackmail this is the part I want to ask myself uh, is this person Dean Law? No, well, he claims Dean Law, right? Is he? Does he use stack mail, right? Now, uh, if this is first email, then it's hard for me to tell. But let's say if I had been receiving email from Dean in the past, I can actually open up the old emails, which I'm pretty sure it was from him. Uh, check the header, you know, show original. Then compare. Uh, the past email was it from the same server as well, right? Or um, let's say in this case, I'm still not sure. Right, so I look at a few more. So it say it passed through Google. Well, obviously this this email was routed to Google server because um, it arrived at the my uh, email server that runs on Google. Right. Uh, let's f look at other few information and see again stack. It, it means it's through the stack network. All right. Uh, so, like I said, this is the part I want to check. Uh, is Dean using this stack? All right. In in his old email, is it the same server? Another thing, another place we can look is uh, remember we talk about D mark right. DMARC is basically is like a digital signature, right? Uh, that shared uh, the uh, the server, both sender server and receiving server to communicate to. Uh, it's like an identity to cross check whether you know this domain or this email is really from the uh, legitimate owner. All right. I might make another video to cover this uh, in future. Give me a like <laughs> if you want to see that happening. But in today we're gonna look for that information here. So we check DMARC. I scroll down here. All right. Now, when I send out this email, it will appear that it come from DeanLaw.com, right? But upon checking, when the server and server they talk to each other, they realize, hey, no, 
this email actually not really from dinlo.com so i failed it right because there isn't a sufficient information the data to match there's no uh public key and private key you know if you want to go that far uh, basically the keys don't match therefore it gave me a fail here and once again there's another fail here so this would be a very uh, red flag already i say all right so um this is the part that i may i can more or less conclude this email is not really from dean right but of course uh, they can be fail safe at time because how, how about if dean dean happens to be traveling he's in uh I don't know, internet cafe somewhere. Uh, is there, is, is those, are those things, uh, places still exist these days? Or it could be in someone's house or his uh, associate's office or anywhere, and then he tried to set up, you know, account. But, and then again, why would Dean do that, right? But let's say that happens, you know. Dean, uh, the real Dean himself could be using a different system to send out email. So this is when you probably want to give Dean a call, you know, to confirm. I've got this email from you, so, you know, is this really you? You know, is this really what you want from me? Right, because no technology is 100% foolproof, right? But what I've shown you here is some, uh, you know, N N uh, NCI, what? Uh, sorry, uh, you know, some forensic that you can do yourself. Uh, now, um, before wasting more time, how about go back to the real email, right, that's from... Uh, well, from Dean that I sent out from my own uh, actual account. So I'm going to show um, original, uh, you know, the same thing. I'm going to investigate the email header. So I put them side by side, right? This, right? On the right side, we are looking at the real domain, the real sender. And immediately you can see it already passes few areas. So we talk about SPF, D, uh, DMARC, and one more DKIM, uh, D -KIM, you know, the digital key, right? Uh, now, this is also because I have already done what was necessary to uh, f um, basically to verify my domain. Okay, um, now bear in mind, not every domain name owner uh, were, uh, were aware that they needed to do this, all right? Even from um, corporate companies, all right? So um, I wouldn't, you know, hold this uh, 100%, but like I said, there are companies who actually even miss this part. Right, but from here, right, you can see my uh This email uh, pass uh, passes SPF, it passes DK uh, and passes DMARC. Okay, because this email really sent through uh, the authorized sender, which in this case is the Google server, right? And just now we looked at the receive, right? So I'm gonna search for receive. Okay, ignore these first two lines. These are all the the routing and. Uh, all right. See, so this part is uh, you know it's becoming more useful. This email was delivered through Google, so. Um, like I said, if I compare to older email, uh, which I knew it was confirmed from Dean, right? And I'm from there, I can tell Dean actually uses Google, right? And this email happens to be delivered from Google. So I can pretty much say, okay, this is correct, all right? Once again, it's Google. Google uh, okay, we can ignore this. Now, the next thing we check on is DMARC, right? Once again, look at DMARC. So DMARC passes, all right? It passed. Uh, because the email claimed that it's from deanlaw.com, but when the server checks the server key, right, public and private key, they say, okay, confirm. This email is really sent through, uh, sent from an authorized server by Dean, all right? Uh, once again, we have a pass here. And you see, I have a DKIM, right? Uh, uh, so I'm going to show you that. Here don't have, because obviously don't have spoof, but here we have it. So signature here, it says, uh, okay, we're going to read this two line. All right, we have the domain here. This all this information right just this few information it's already enough to say that now this email is quite likely from the real person himself but once again you know like everything else uh we cannot just you know uh, uh we, you know, based on this few information although it says that this is real there could be still chances right that someone actually managed to hack into my account and you know literally use my account on google to send out the email so uh at the end of the day right i would still say uh you know use your gut feeling or even you know just give the person a call if in doubt right what i've shown you here it's more like uh oh csi that's the word i'm trying to you know it's, it's some diy csi that you can do right do yourself csi but if it's something really critical and important, right? Um, I would still recommend, you know, if you feel that, you know, you you have that, you know, 
you don't you feel unrest about it right then pick up the phone and call the person to confirm it because no like i said no technology is 100 percent foolproof right even the best uh you know things like this can happen to the best yep so this is about it um what i have uh, basically i've explained what email spoofing is how it works how people can easily create an email address without the need to even own that domain right and um, how they can use it to send out uh, send emails to people and trick them into doing things and uh, lastly how you can do your own uh, CSI to go through to check through whether the email is uh, real real or fake you know and uh, Thank you for your time. I hope this information is useful for you. I try not to keep it really technical because if I want to, this video is gonna take about two hours. All right, but there are a lot, a lot can be covered actually. Like for example, I shown you SPF, DKIM, and uh, DMARC, right? And exactly what they are, you know, how they work. I'm, I would be really happy to share them with you. Um, so let me know either, either in a comment or give me a like. Right, or subscribe to my channel, give me some encouragement a bit, tell me that you like this kind of content, then I will have good reason or excuse to make videos like this and you know share my knowledge with everyone. I hope you find this video, uh, video useful and I look forward to see you again in next video, if there's any. <laughs> Alright, see you, cheers.